Hello and welcome to another episode of Marketing Cheat Codes. My name is Ed Brialt, host of Marketing Cheat Codes, and I'm super excited today to have an individual who has the word evangelist in their title because that's what we need. We need evangelists to talk about all this technology that's changing us. Um, Carrie Hain, welcome to Marketing Cheat Codes. Hi, Ed. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Had to have to have you on um, some of these things that you're a subject matter expert in and you evangelize, uh, the audience needs to know. And we're going to get into that structured content, uh, headless CMS, sort of demystify a bunch of these terms that are flying around. Uh, but first, want to talk about you. Uh, would love to hear a little bit about your backstory uh, where you got started. How does one start and then move through this world to become an evangelist for a, I'll call it bleeding edge uh, technology company? Um, honestly, there's no secret. Uh, having a growth mindset, I, you know, using some more buzzwords. Love, <laughs> love growth mindset. But, you know, but f for real, I, I started working in the web in the late 90s. Um, when it was just starting, um, we were starting to build websites. I was essentially a webmaster, and as um, as the as the web and digital matured, I met, grew along with it and was just learning whatever I can from whoever uh, I could, and just kept developing it. And then eventually. Um, started calling myself a content strategist, helped to build a content practice within a, a full service interactive agency, and um, eventually uh, partnered with uh, someone to write a book called Designing Connected Content, which was around this, okay, let's think bigger um, and more strategically and model our content so we can be ready for whatever is next. Because by then, in the mid-teens, we knew that whatever was next was going to be different than it is now. Um, and that's okay if we can keep growing. So um, yeah, just kept building off of successes and failures and uh, learning and, and talking to other people, making connections and between ideas and disciplines and people and organizations and um, ended up at Sanity as an evangelist um, because our our philosophies aligned. My okay. my content, the my way of thinking about content matches theirs, and they built a product around that. Um, so it's been it's been fun to to learn more and uh, help bring these ideas to to more people and and watch how how they can get creative with implementing it. Very cool. Uh, in, in what you said in there, it's like this um, um, early on when you wrote the book, it's like, well, it's it's sort of like this, how do we future proof? Things are always going to be changing. How do we prepare for change? There will be it. And then um, that's really like the, with Sanity now, I would love to talk about the company, the technology, um, this idea that um, of composability now that we're finding um uh, organizations adopt a, a I'll call it a, a technology mindset around um, can you tell us about sanity a little bit and the product and some of the services and capabilities yeah so it's it's the product that nobody wanted to make <laughs> our uh, <laughs> co-founders uh, were looking for a, a system a CMS to use uh, to build things that build websites build, digital products the way they wanted to um, with, you know, quite semantically structured content and they couldn't find one. So they built it themselves. Um, and so the product is five years old now, um, or the company is five years old. The product's probably six. Um, and it continues to evolve as, as, you know, we get more, more customers. So it, it is, a content management system in the purest sense in that it manages, it's a system for managing content. Um, and so it could be called a headless CMS. We can certainly be used as a headless 
CMS, um, which is often associated with web content and web only. Yeah. Um, but that's only one use case. Um, you can use it to power websites. You can use it to pow power products. You can use it to power kiosks in restaurants or stores. Um, you can use it to print a book um, all from the same content. So we have a content lake which is a schema-less repository for the content, which means uh -huh. you can then fish out any content based on what that content is and what the relationships are to other other pieces in, in the lake and then deliver those via an API to any interface um, with the proper queries and all, all the things. I... I'm not the technologist, so how that all happens is magic to me. But all I know, what I do know is that I love that idea that I can just put all of these things in this lake and fish out what I need at any given time. Um, sure. And I think that's what makes it pretty unique among uh, other composable systems, headless systems, uh, and you know it can fit within. It can integrate. Because it's API driven, it can integrate with many other systems. So, uh, to your point, with the 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 composability is is that stack. You can choose the best in breed for different different things. You know, like a primo. Um, you know, we don't all have to do everything, um, which is kind of where things were going about ten years ago. Um, Monolithic and, platforms. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. And so a couple terms, not everybody knows some of these. We, we use them every day. Uh, Want to demystify headless, right? So headless means there's a body, there's a head. What does that mean for the, if we were going to, I call it speak like a person, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the, the slap sort of methodology of explaining a term, how do, how would we describe what headless means and then applying that to a uh, content management system. So with headless, there's a head in the body, like you said, and then there's the 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 body is the content, the the guts of the thing, and then the head is what people experience. It's the front end, it's a website, it's an app, it's a screen on your phone. Um, and so they're separated. It's completely separating the, the content and information from the presentation of it so that ideally you can use that content for, to power multiple heads um, in whatever format it needs to be, whether it's it's a smart speaker or a smart TV or a laptop or a phone. Um, those are all devices, but there's even more. Within each one of those devices, there's multiple ways to deliver content. Got it. So multiple, is it like a, is there a thing called a Hydra? Like a multiple headed? <laughs> there, there should be, right? It's not really headless. It's like multi-head. <laughs> multi Very cool. Um, so many advantages to that. So when we break down like the, the economics of wanting to be um, having headless technology uh, capabilities like a CMS, you know, I've got to think like, Oh, there's content reuse, obviously, right? That multi, uh, that endpoint experience, the, that presentation layer of many places. So one piece of content, multiple presentation layers. Um, there's got to be some other like economics or efficiencies when you look at it too uh, for the content creators, uh, like just this content reuse. What are some of the key benefits that, uh, an organization who wants to put a technology like this in, what, what could they get? Um, there's many benefits if they're if if they're really using it in the way it's intended to be used to to really amplify that or optimize yeah. that reuse. Uh -huh. um, so you have less duplicate content. So there's less content to maintain in the first place, and that content because it's not copied and pasted over and over and having to be updated over and over, you get fewer errors. You you don't make mistakes. You don't miss one and maybe have a wrong price out there or Ooh. 
wrong compliant. information. Yeah. So compliance, yeah. um, so that lowers that risk of that. There's, um, you can produce content faster because it's all all there. You just have to pull it together into a new web page, say, instead of creating a whole new web page, you just, you can, you can fill in the fields and um, press a button and now you have a new web page. So you can produce content faster. Um, which means, you know, which has so many business impacts. You can respond to opportunities and crises faster. Um, you can make updates. You know, I think, yeah, as we went through the, especially early COVID when everything was constantly changing, I, I know a lot of things were missed. And I was like, I don't know if I trust this because I knew it would take people so long to update their hours or whether they were open or closed or, masks and not masks and all of these different things um it i know it was hard to maintain um and change yeah. when it didn't have to be wow so um obviously speed uh reuse compliance which is a huge one both i'll call it um industry compliance whether you're you know financial services life sciences or even like brand compliance mm -hmm. uh, as well uh, quick updates um, and uh, response times in the market. It, you said a, a a word there, which is like brilliant, which is trust. Can I even trust this content that I'm experiencing from a brand out there? Um, did were they not able to update it? Did they not know about it? So that ability to have accurate fa information out uh, in the digital experience world obviously is going to build better. Uh, trust in that equation of the brand and the the consumer yeah um the other the other advantage is search engine optimization um Oops. because when you're storing ideally you're storing this all semantically so it has embedded meaning in each each piece of the content which is exactly what google and apparently now bing is back on the the scene <laughs> uh, <laughs> with the, I with the AI, but any search engine wants that that critical information about the meaning and they're gonna, you know, boost it. It's gonna Reward. come up in search results better. Um, so just by having, have, it's just natural, it's organic. Um, so you don't have to pay for for the top anymore because you can just come up in the top because you you have the best content that the the computer that's reading it, the robot that's reading it understands because you've told it exactly what what this is. Yeah, you you, you sped up its interpretation so that mm -hmm. it can do the right thing, which is serve up the most relevant content to that user. That's fantastic. Um, structured content is a, a term you use as well. Um, structured would mean there's a, an unstructured version how do we explain structured versus unstructured content? And I'll call it the one on one hundred and one. And then, you know, as, as we get a little bit more advanced, what would that mean for some folks? Yeah. So stru structured content is content that's broken down into its smallest reasonable parts, so that it's understandable by humans and computers. Um, and that's where we get that into that semantic meaning that mm. computers only understand what they're told. Um, and so so that does mean it's kind of like a database so or a form we turn we turn the back end of this content into form so it's information and data it really becomes data and can then be used in multiple places um and then unstructured content is what we often in the content strategy world call blobs. Blobs, <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's actually an actual data type in the database called blob storage. <laughs> blob type. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just everything is in one rich text field or WYSIWYG that what you see is what you get. And it's it's not described. It it may have some some like heading tags on it or or some bullets and things like that, but it's not, it's very just, it just is what it is and it can only be used for the thing it was created for. So if it's a web page, it can only be that one web page. Um, it can't be used as data 
in other places or um, to to give it more of that explicit meaning. Um, and making that switch is is quite a big uh, effort because it, it completely changes how you think about content and not just creating it, but managing it, optimizing it, um, well, enriching it. On that point around thinking, what are some of the things we need to unlearn about content creation processes and relearn in this new world of um, structured content uh, to take advantage and get the, I'll call it the cheat code of what it can provide the brand? Like, what's the new mindset of thinking about content strategy and even the production of content? Yeah, I, I love that you said unlearn because that that's way harder than learning. <laughs> oh yeah, um, we get used to to doing something a certain way. So I think what we have to unlearn is single use. It's we're not we have to stop thinking about the web page or the app screen or the product screen and think about what what is that thing. So um, so. A lot of people will think maybe about a product landing page, right? So, okay, we need this landing page and we're going to put information about our product in it. Okay, that's fine. If all you have is about that product anywhere in your whole inventory of your company, that one web page, but pretty sure that more that product that. is used in other places. Um, so you have to think about it as a product. So now we say, okay, well, what characteristics does the product have? And then we, so we take that step back, define the characteristics of our product or the types of products we have. And then we can say, okay, now which of those characteristics or attributes or properties should go into this product landing page? Um, and now we've turned that product content in making it reusable as well as making that product template, that product landing page template easy to publish because all some, someone has to do is come in, we have a new product. Okay, here's here's their feature, its features and other attributes publish. Now the the website knows that there's another product and it just shows up. You don't have to like create a new web page and get that approved. You just you can create it, so that increases your your content velocity, the speed of which you can publish. It saves you from putting it in the wrong place on the website navigation and and all kinds of other things. So that's just one one example of getting out of that kind of web or that very tactical mindset of we need this content on this page or this this uh screen yeah there's a there's definitely a, a mindset change on some things um how about organizational change oh um, <laughs> sort of getting that what does the enterprise mindset need to be like in in we'll call it in the future and then what are maybe some of those enterprise thinking assumptions that are getting in the way of getting to the 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 future of of this yeah so gosh at the enterprise level um the change the transformation is it's part of a digital transformation it's a complete different completely different way of thinking about your organization because every enterprise is now a media company a publishing company and a technology company um and we have central IT systems. Um, the The media part is probably mostly covered by marketing, PR, communications, but content is everywhere. Um, yeah. So, so that publishing is our websites. You know, in an enterprise, how many websites does an enterprise actually have? Probably hundreds. Uh. <laughs> um, you have documentation. You have. You have so, so, so much content and it's across every division, every department. Um, and Agent, so- localized country. Right, yeah, yeah, it's just, it's literally everywhere and no one's in charge of it. So the best case is 
someone at the C level is in charge of content, a chief content officer, even when you're not a media company like Netflix or HBO or whatever. Love that. Love that title. Even for and, non Yeah. Yeah. And so you can then centralize your your policies, your plans, your strategy, and then decentralize the execution um, based on each what each department needs or each division, each region, whatever. Um, at whatever level, they can have their own way of executing that strategy. Um, that's not going to happen overnight. <laughs> yeah. So, so how how do we get? How do they get from wherever they are now to to that? First of all, recognizing that that should be a goal. Um, start small, and this is where where I've heard the most success is starting small. Start in one place where you have some expertise, um, or you can bring in a content strategist to, to help you think through these things who can work with, with your technology teams, with your marketing teams, and maybe start there. Um, wherever, wherever it makes sense, um, do some pilot projects, see how things work, shift, you know, move one CMS into a structured content CMS, um, change how you work with content, figure out your operations and workflows around that um, in a small way and then see see what works, what doesn't, and then you can scale. And then you can add, you know, expand that to be in a couple other divisions or departments and then go beyond that or or even start small and then add translations to that and and localization. Maybe that's the way to go. It doesn't doesn't really matter. There's no one path no. between from here to there. Um, but what matters is that you start somewhere and, and really start small because this is, this really does affect every part of how people work. Um, so try, trying to do it all at once is boiling the ocean and it's just not, not possible. Yeah. yeah I feel like what you just described, there's gotta be a framework or a maturity model of sorts or a capability model of sorts. So, cause folks, when we an organization's going through this change. First, you want to say, where are we as an organization? It's like that that map at the mall or the theme park that says you are here. And then you can say, okay, where do I want to go? How do I get there? You're not going to be able to jump all the way across the, the park, the two miles, but you're going to make some incremental moves. And you know, at, at noon, you're probably going to want to stop and get something to eat. So is there, um, is there a, a pathway or a um, is there a model that exists today that um, that organizations can can reference, or is it like um, we're all try we're all just figuring it out right now and sort of leverage some best practices of find some incremental wins and do the evangelism and talk about the benefits and um, is there a probably no blueprint here you go but uh, we're gonna have to figure out these journeys through our our organizations. Yeah, I think I think it's what the latter. Um, it's yeah. we got to we're all figuring it out. Um, I keep waiting for one or two big companies to figure it out and then share that with everyone so we can start developing a blueprint. But yeah. uh, hasn't happened yet. Um, I definitely you know here at Sanity I get the the um, I'm lucky enough to get insights into to some big companies and. Honestly, they're all starting small, um, with one champion within their their whole enterprise, um, and doing just what you said, like evangelizing internally, doing learning sessions. I've done some sessions with our customers, explaining structured content, what benefits it gets, what's in it for them. Um, I was called a wizard one time. <laughs> All that. It's not like I like here. I created this in in half an hour. We like we spun up the whole CMS and put these these things together, and they're like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. So, yeah, I really. Your your response to that is like super refreshing, which is we're all still figuring this out. Even organizations that we would expect to be have figured this out already are aren't necessarily there yet, and mm -hmm. um, it's, it's it's something that this. Sort of sure. community of technology oh. practitioners um, can we can we can 
sort of unite around and get together and find the common um, challenge and um, help move each other uh, forward on the path. Um, I love that. Uh, where, do, where do you think like um, whenever, you know, if you could go into your crystal ball a little bit uh, as a, as a, do wizards go into crystal balls? I don't, I, I don't. Sure. Or sir. Or, <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, what does, you know, sort of like get into the future a little bit whenever um, headless is really taken off, composable is the standard. We figured this um, structured content, sometimes referred to as atomic content. I've heard it called that or modular content. What does what does that future look like? And what will then the new thing that we're trying to figure out look like? Oh, what, well, what's going to take this, the place of what we're doing right now? Um, yeah. Uh, you know what? Pretty far out there. I, it, I want to I, yeah. I'm not sure that's going to happen in my lifetime, or at least not my career. But <laughs> what, and then I'm thinking about some of these like chat GPTs um, that are popping, um, generative AI that we're getting. Um, it's. I feel it's an inflection point. I definitely think generative AI um, is, yeah. and like chat GTP, et cetera, and, and some others. Um, are really, whenever you find this intersection of what organizations are doing, are are the, the future that we can't hardly see yet. But uh, what are your thoughts? When you saw generative AI hit, what were you thinking? Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, because they're they're not intelligent. Um, it They can't reason. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. And they're they're learning from whatever they find. Um, uh -huh. It I think it's super valuable. Um, it's obviously a hot topic, but having structured content that's semantic is going to speed that up because then things can actually be intelligent. It, I don't wow. hear it much that's anymore, cool. but it, you know, ten ish years ago, one of the hot terms was content intelligence. Mm -hmm. um, and that was about having semantically rich content that you could dynamically use anywhere, um, which I think the concept hasn't gone away. Um, it's just has a different, we just don't use that term, but yeah, in that future, when we have that, when that's the standard, um, what came to mind was, um, we all get to be, uh, Lego masters. Uh, the people, you know, like the, there's people who just take all the Lego bricks and build new things out of it because they have, yeah. that's the material. So content and content as data becomes a material of design. So we can create whatever we want. Um, we don't have to spend all our time slugging through bad systems and technology and trying to talk to the right people to get it to look right on the website. We get past all that and just get to create. Um, let computers do what they do best, which is computation and running algorithms. And humans are the creative ones and the ones that make new I new ideas and new connections. So we get to do more of that um, when we when we can we can get to the 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 expectation that content is data. Um, and then what do we do with it? Um, instead of how do we do that in the first place? I love that. I love what you just said there. Um, data and content is the material of design and AI can be our, our co-pilot, augment us. We can outsource some things we don't need to do, but it gets us humans back to the real value add, which is the reasoning, the creativity uh, that we've not yet fed the machines to even understand that we're the, the generative intelligence that it's not artificial. It's the real stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting that you say copilot because there is an, an, uh, a coding artificial intelligence tool called copilot that I know our, our engineers and developers use to write code. Mm -hmm. Um, that they say is magic. Like you just start typing and it's like, oh, this is what you want. 
And they're, you know, they come every once in a while, someone will post on our internal Slack, like, I think it actually knows me. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. Um, yeah, I guess, you know, prescriptive in some ways or suggestive uh, in many. Awesome. Carrie, th this was a super cool talk. You demystified so many cool terms, dropped some marketing cheat codes. Where can folks um, follow along with you uh, to get more of your information and uh, and just see what you're you're up to and and what you're evangelizing on? Yeah, I think the best place is the the Sanity website, Sanity.io. Um, I'm always writing more blog posts, more articles. I'm in the middle of uh, creating a, a content modeling guide to help you figure out the structure um, from that that organizational perspective, not the website perspective. So that's what I'm working on now. Um, so that's one place uh, people can follow me on LinkedIn. Um, I'm still on Twitter, not so much, kind of like everybody else. Who knows what will happen right. there? Um, but th those are the the best places to to see what, what the latest is. Fantastic. And when that content modeling guide gets done, we're going to have to put that in the show notes and uh, make sure folks get uh, access to it. Uh, well, very good. Carrie, thank you so much. And um, you're forever on, uh, on the podcast and so is your knowledge. So thank you so much. Thank you. This is fun.